Hey everybody, Nick here with PhotoFocus, and today we're going to talk about getting better sun flared images with Photomatix Pro. Here I've got some photos from Cannon Beach in upstate California, right near the coast of Oregon. And I'm trying to get a proper exposure here. I can get pretty close in camera because of the A7R2's dynamic range. Uh, and even if I jump to the develop module here real quick, if I pull the highlights down and raise the shadows up, uh, we're still not getting that great of an image. Maybe increase the clarity a little bit, do some whites and blacks. Uh, it's still not looking that great. We could try to darken the sky a little bit with a graduated filter here. And that gets us a little bit closer, but still not really what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and reset this and merge these images into HDR. So let's go ahead and select all of our bracketed photos here and we'll right click and choose export to Photomatix Pro. Now these are 42 megapixel uncompressed raw images, so they might take a minute to export into Photomatix. Here I'm telling Photomatix to go ahead and align the images for me based on the preset that I took these photos on a tripod. So the camera's not moving. I'm going to have it reduce the noise in the underexposed images only. And I want it to reduce chromatic aberrations. So it's one less thing I have to do when I re-import into Lightroom. Rather than having to save the HDR image from Photomatix and bring it back into Lightroom, the Photomatix Lightroom plugin does that for me. I'm choosing to combine the file names and add a suffix here, HDRX, so that I know this was processed with Photomatix Pro. Now let's go ahead and choose export. These are 42 megapixel uncompressed raw images, so they do take a little bit to export. Inside Photomatix, we're going to start with tone mapping, and we're going to go with the details enhancer. Uh, and right away, you may not like how it looks. Um, but we're going to go and choose method defaults here to zero it out. Now, Photomatix may seem complicated, but I always start at the top and make my way down to the bottom where I can save and re-import. So let's start with the strength of the image. This is the amount of HDR processing that goes on. I usually keep this up high, somewhere between 90 and 100. In this case, I'll bump it all the way to 100. Saturation, we can adjust here in Photomatix, but I kind of prefer to do that in Lightroom. So we'll just touch this a little bit, and then we'll do the rest when we get back to Lightroom. Tone compression decides how much we're merging the light and dark images from our bracketed photos. So it's just a matter of moving this slider to kind of find out what works for your image. More to the left is a more darker image and more to the right is more lighter. So we'll kind of stay a little bit here in the middle, right about there. And detail contrast will help sharpen that up just a touch. Lighting adjustments lets you modify the light after the fact. Whether we want more light on the foreground or more light on the background. But we want to kind of mix and match here a little bit. So we'll try to find a happy medium right about there in the middle of our image. Let's go ahead and set the white point of our image. We have a pretty bright sun here though. I'm a little bit worried about blowing out, but it is the sun. Uh, so we'll just keep this up a little bit from zero. And we'll just increase the black point here to add some contrast to the image. Gamma overall shifts the image a little bit lighter or a little bit darker based on our white point and black point set. And temperature, we'll go ahead and leave this for Lightroom, where we can set our own white balance. And the last thing we want to look at here is the micro smoothing. Let's go ahead and raise that all the way up. And this kind of looks soft here in the foreground. It's smoothing out all the rigidness in our photo. And sometimes that HDR photos need that. But in this case, I want to show the grid of the rock, so I'm going to shut this all the way off. Again, I'll turn it up. See the rocks are smooth, and then we'll turn it down, and the rocks are a little more grittier. One thing we skipped over here uh, is smoothing our highlights. Notice how up here in the sky we've got some brown areas. And no, I'm not talking about the censored spots. Uh, but we'll go ahead and drag the smooth highlight slider up a little bit, and that gets rid of that. And that's it. We're going to go ahead and choose Save and Re-Import. And now Photomatix will apply all of our adjustments and re-import it into Lightroom. And here's our merged HDR image. Now in my workflow, I merged HDR first and then 
edit the image when it comes back into Lightroom. So let's go ahead and finish our edits to this. Clicking into the develop module, first things first, we'll set the color temperature for the image. Now it was a sunset, so we do want it warm, but we want the rocks a little bit cool because that uh, always plays well. So we'll drag the color temperature slider to the left just a touch and see if we can't cool those rocks down. Here's before and here's after. It's very slight. We'll pull some highlights down a little bit just so we can get a little more gold out of that sun. And shadows are fine. We'll take a look at our white levels here. By holding down the option key, we can convert the image to black when we're dragging the slider and see our peaking highlights here with the white on screen. And again with the blacks, we'll do the same thing. It turns to white and then we can look at the blacks. Too much black is we're blowing out the blacks. And we, there we go. Just enough to add some contrast to the image. And of course, clarity always looks good on the sunset. We'll scroll down here and we'll do a little bit of sharpening. And this image is pretty, and this image is pretty good. Now we do have to correct some of these spots up here from the dirt on the lens. Uh, so we can just grab our healing brush tool here in Lightroom. Use the bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the brush. And then click through all the spots. And now that we've removed all the spots on this image, we are ready to export and share. And without HDR, an image like this really wouldn't be possible. All right, let's go back to the grid view and take a look at a second example here. These are images from Zuma Beach in California. Uh, here's my underexposed image. Here's my exposed image. And here's my overexposed image. Uh, and none of them really capture the starburst in the sun like I wanted to. So I had to merge it to HDR to get something like this. So let's go ahead and walk through that process. We'll go ahead and select our underexposed images. We will right click and choose export and export to Photomatix Pro. We'll align the images based on a tripod because I was shooting on a tripod. We will reduce noise in the underexposed images and we'll reduce the chromatic aberrations. Again, we'll re-import into Lightroom and we'll add the suffix underscore HDRX so we know that they were processed in Photomatix Pro. Choose Export, and now Lightroom will export the images into Photomatix Pro. Now that we're inside Photomatix Pro, we'll know that we're doing tone mapping and details enhancing. And just so we can start off with a fresh slate, we'll go ahead and choose Method Defaults here at the bottom. Starting from the top again, we'll go ahead and increase our strain slider until we get something we're happy with. Again, I always find a sweet swap between 90 and 100. Saturation we will save for Lightroom. And let's take a look at our tone compression here. I want the image a little bit brighter, so we're going to bump it up to 2.0. But we'll add some detail contrast here. And then let's take a look at where the light is. We're going to go ahead and light the foreground a little bit. So we'll go a minus 4.2. Again, more to the right goes to the brighter spot and more to the left goes to the shadows for a more surreal look. Smoothing highlights will take this top part out and smooth out the top of the image. Get rid of that darkness. There we go. And let's set our white point and black points here. Take a look at the gamma. and we'll save the temperature for Lightroom. Now let's take a look at the micro smoothing. If we turn it all the way up to 30, it's going to smooth out the sand here a little bit and make it kind of look a little cloudy. We don't really want to do that, so we're gonna go ahead and drop it down to zero and leave it nice and gritty here on the bottom. Now that we're all set, we're gonna choose save and re-import to bring this back into Lightroom and finish making our final touches. Back in Lightroom, we're gonna find the image that says HDRX right here on the file name and let's go ahead and make our final changes in the develop module we will go ahead and set the white balance i don't want it to be too cool this is not avatar and too warm kind of looks a little funny so let's go ahead and reset that to zero with double clicking it and we'll drag it to a plus six let's go ahead and pull the highlights down a little bit 
shadows are fine and we'll go ahead and set the white point again holding the option key while I'm dragging these sliders to see where my white and blacks are clipping and we'll add some clarity here I prefer to use the vibrant slider here to only apply saturation in areas that Lightroom thinks we need it rather than applying saturation to the entire image so let's scroll down here and we'll go ahead and sharpen the image and let's add a vignette down here at the bottom. And boom, give that a five star rating and we're good to go. Our eyes see more dynamic range than our cameras do, which is why we have to choose between exposing for the highlights or exposing for the shadows. And thanks to Photomatix Pro, we can merge these images into an HDR image, bringing to life a more realistic image similar to what we saw with our eyes when we were there taking the picture. That's it for now. Be sure to check out photofocus.com for more articles and video tutorials just like this one. I'm Nick with Photofocus. Thanks for watching.